Hello to everybody, my name is Andy, I am the application engineer of RVSD and today I want to introduce to you the MDevice software which can be used to configure most of the DLT devices of Advantic. The MDevice configuration software is made mostly for system admins and technical staff. You can get several system informations like temperature, running time or closer battery information and you can change several settings like power and startup settings, front keyboard, display and radio like Bluetooth, Wi-Fi and so on. You have several configuration for the M device internal like the uh, change of the password or import or export the M device configuration. In the standard configuration the M device is installed on every system. It starts automatically and you can see the started M device with the M device icon and the taskbar. To open the M device window, you click the M device icon and click on Show M device window. Then the dialog opens, and you can either log in without password, it's just a read only. This is used for technical stuff to read out serial numbers, firmware versions, temperatures and some other information or you have to log in as an administrator to do some changes on the system settings. The login is case sensitive and the default password for the M device is gold like the Metal G-O-L-D. If you type in gold and you do the login you see the system information page. Since on every device after the system start, the M device is started automatically. You can see on the icon. You can also quit the M device by clicking the icon and click on quit M device. After that, the uh, icon is vanished. To restart the M device, you just type in M device and open the app again, and then the icon is present in the taskbar again. After logging into the M device, you see on the left hand side the main menu. First of all, you see the system information. This information shows you statistics and informational data on the environment controller, as runtime, software versions, hard switch offs, which is sometimes very useful, especially if you're looking for issues, temperatures, and battery information. The second point is power settings. Here you can do configuration of the automatic switch off behavior, delay time, ignition, ignition recognition, charging, defroster, etc. The third point is startup settings. Here it connects to a server and starts programs automatically when booting the device. The front key settings defines the assignment of the optional front panel keys. This depends also on the device model. The display settings are the settings dependent on the optional industrial computer equipment. Here we can see the battery pack, PCT touchscreen sensitivity and the COM1 supply, just to name a few. The M device settings is internal settings for the M device program. You can set passwords, import export functions and configure the software keyboard for M device. And last, the radio settings, you can do configuration on the radio settings like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and GPRS. On the system information page, on the very top, you can see the serial number. This is very important. If you need support from us and you submit the serial number, then we exactly know the configuration of the unit. You also can see the manufacturing date, which is calendar week and year the industrial PC model uh, name, then you can see the BIOS version, uh, you can see the firmware version of the base unit and also the firmware version of the front unit. Operating system version you see in the next point and the installed processor and the total runtime. All this information are very helpful if you need support from our RMA department 
to get very quick to the base on the issue. Furthermore, you can see the temperature of the front unit, the current temperature, and also very useful, the min and max temperature, which are recorded. The same for the base unit. You see the current temperature, the min max temperature in standby, and the min max temperature during operation. With the power settings, you have a large number of possibilities to switch on or switch off the DLTV73. As you can see, you can choose the switch on as, uh, as soon as the power supply is connected or when the power supply is connected and the power key is pressed. Then if the ignition is on, when the ignition on or the power key is pressed or at least when the power key is pressed and the ignition is on in the same time. Also, the switch off methods, uh, several. You can say, I want to switch off the unit only by window shutdown, so no power key will be recognized. Um, the second, when the power key is pressed, then you also can switch off the unit just by uh, switch off the ignition. And you can shut down the unit when the ignition is off, or the power key is pressed, or at least when the power key is pressed after the ignition is set off. With the power settings, you also have very important delay time settings, which are called shutdown delay time settings. First of all, we are talking about the follow-up time. The follow-up time depends on the configuration that was stored for switching off. The follow-up time is only active when the following switch off settings are made. When ignition is off or when ignition is off or the power key is pressed. If you don't want the DLTV73 to shut down immediately after switching off the ignition, but to remain switched on for a while, you can enter a run on time in seconds here. The shutdown counter is displayed in a window that covers the entire screen. In this countdown, the follow-up time is counted down. As long as the countdown is running, no entries can be made. During this time, the DLTV73 can be switched back to normal operating status with the ignition. The second time is the switch off time, also adjusted in seconds. The switch off time starts after the follow up time. During this time, an attempt is made to properly shut down the operating system. If this is not possible in this time, the system is shut down hard. To avoid this, sufficient time must be set. For example, to install updates or similar. With the power settings, you also can make changes to the charging of the battery. Here you can set the battery pack of the DLTV73 is charged when the unit is switched off and being supplied with power. In this case, for example, when the DLT is connected to a vehicle battery. You also can make changes to charge the battery also when the system is switched off. Please pay attention to the energy consumption of the vehicle battery. With the power settings, you also have the possibility to adjust the defroster functionality. This menu item is only displayed on a unit which has an installed screen defroster. In a normal way, the defroster heats up the device if it exceeds certain limits of temperature. But you can also switch on the defroster functionality is active when the system is switched off. If this option is active, the screen defroster always works when the 73 is supplied with power. This can be the case, for example, before the device is switched on. As a precondition, the temperatures has to be within the defined ranges. And please note the energy consumption of the vehicle battery has to be taken into consideration. The last menu entry is the COM port settings. With the COM port power option, you are able to supply with the COM1 serial interface either 5 or 12 volt DC. Here, the 5 or 12 volt are supplied on connector pin 9, which in a normal way is the ring indicator. The next menu entry is startup settings. In this menu you can define programs that shall be started after the network connection to a server has been successfully established at each boot of the operating system. The first menu item is the startup. If the startup is turned on, the device will try to establish a connection with the server specified below. On success, the below specified application will be started. You can switch it on or off. 
The server IP address, you just click on the IP address and you can see the IP address and then you can enter another one which depends on your network. If you click on OK, then it's stored. Application for startup, you can choose your own application like a batch file or command file. In my case, I've chosen the notepad exe open and then you can see the notepad. If you want to remove it again, just click again and you can either change or remove the entry. With the seconds to wait for network, you can entry the seconds which the unit should wait until the network connection is established. And the info text, you also can change waiting for network connection. You can also entry your own text. And the last menu entry is startup application without network. This is a kind of auto start. If you switch this on, the applications don't wait for established network connection and just start. With the front key settings, you are able to switch on or switch off the function of some front keyboard buttons and also the function key assignments you can do with this dialog. First of all, you have the function key for second function. If you activate or deactivate this key, all the second function from the function keys are accessible or not. You have one button to switch on or switch off the special keys, S1 to S12. You also can uh, disable the brightness control key. Um, you are able to uh, disable or enable the backlight key. Also the touch disable key can be enabled or disabled. And you can also enable or disable the power key. But please pay attention, this option for the power key is only displayed if no option related to the power key has been selected in the power settings module in the switch on options. For example, when the power key is pressed. This option is automatically hidden to prevent a misconfiguration leading to a non-booting system. With the front key settings, you also have the possibility to assign special characters to each of the function keys. So you have the possibilities to have from S1 to S12, a special character to each key separately programmed. For example, if you want to assign to open the Explorer with the S01 key, you just click on the F1, this the recent assignment, you press the Windows and E button, and then you have left Windows and E, and as soon if you press the F1, the Explorer opens. If you want to have another key combination to the SO2 key, you click on SO2 and you go Control Alt, for example, A. And then you have for your special application maybe the Control Alt and A. You also are able to assign some uh, batch files if you have a short key on the batch file link. To resume to the original state, either you press no key and say OK, then there's no assignment, or to go back, like the SR1, you press the F1 key. Please note, the DLT model is recognized automatically. The configuration dialog will be shown suitable to the model. For example, the front key settings of the DLT V73P Plus device differs pretty much to the standard unit because the P plus units only have three buttons at the front. It's brightness control and power key, and therefore there are no function key and other keys for each program. With the display settings, you can adapt all the PCAP touch and display settings regarding the unit. Please note, the setting options vary depending on the DLTV73 model and optional equipment. For example, M-Device only displays the corresponding PCAP touch parameter settings if the PCAP touch option is installed in the DLTV73. Some settings only became active after the DLTV73 is switched off by shutting down and then switched on again. A restart is not sufficient. You can use at the very top uh, the changing between the mouse mode instead of multi-touch mode. This mostly is necessary for old application and in the mouse mode, you still have the mouse pointer and you can uh, choose like using a standard mouse, but there's no multi-touch opportunity. 
If you change back to multi-touch mode, then it's like a tablet behavior. The PCAP touch default sensitivity mode can be set up as a default during the system startup from non-glove mode and glove mode to thick glove mode. This depends on the working gloves the user, user is using during his operation. You can also can start the M-Touch for the user-adjustable PCAP sensitivity at the startup if you switch it on. This looks like a special window where the user, which is non-administrator, can choose on his own if he is using non-glove, glove mode or thick glove mode. This is very useful if you are, have changing working places, maybe in the deep freeze storage or in the cold storage or even outside with the same vehicle. With the MDVice settings, you have all the internal settings of the MDVice software. The first point is change the MDVice password. This is case sensitive. It's very easy if you click on the change MDVice password button, uh, the dialog opens, you can insert a new password and confirm the password. So you can change the standard password from gold to your own. The next very useful topic is to export the customer settings. If you have to configure several units, you can have one example unit and export all the settings you did on the M device just by clicking export and then the dialog opens then you can give your own file name and save the tgz file to the hard drive then afterwards you can copy the tgz file and uh, bring it into some new units and with import customer settings you can import all your settings that you have done on your example device if you have some issues, you can use the load factory default button and after load factory defaults, everything is in the standard configuration of right after the installing. The second part is the M keyboard setting. The M keyboard is a special software which can be controlled by M device and this shows a software keyboard which is highly configurable and here you can switch on or switch off the visibility of the keyboard either during the sign-in screen so also the user is able to type in the password during the startup or just show the M keyboard after sign-in it's just for the current user and then the M keyboard will be started after the sign-in or you can switch off both of them so the M keyboard after a reboot will not be shown anymore. The last menu item is the radio settings. In the radio settings you can switch on or switch off every part which is Wi-Fi or radio related on the unit. It's the Wi-Fi, it's the Bluetooth, it's the LTE and the GPS system and also you can switch on or switch off the external antenna if it's mounted on the system. Thank you for your attention. You can also download the user manual on our Advantic website. You are welcome to contact us if you need further assistance. See you in our next video.